Rev up your engines. Titus Wake says, what should I do about a noisy catalytic converter? Should I buy a new one to replace it? I drive a 97 Dodge Intrepid. Okay, let's say it passes the emissions test and you don't have any check engine lights on. You can live with it. It won't hurt anything. But eventually, if they break down inside, the substrata is a ceramic material and it's got platinum in them. There's little holes. If you look through one end to another, the flashlight, you can see all the tiny little holes inside that the hot air goes through. If it finally breaks off into little pieces, then it will jam into the back of the cat and it'll clog up the exhaust and then you won't have any exhaust coming out the tailpipe or very little and the engine will start to overheat and won't go fast. Then you have to replace it. So if it runs okay, you can actually live with it. But if the check engine light's coming on and you have running problems, then you got to replace it. My advice with that car is price around because a lot of the aftermarket ones are cheap and they'll work perfectly fine. A lot of the newer ones, you got to buy a dealer OEM one because the software is really touchy, but on an older one like that, often you can buy an aftermarket one, save a ton of money. Roman Medina says, what company makes the best pickup trucks? Depends on what size truck you want. If you want a smaller pickup truck, I would say get a Toyota Tacoma. They're really well made and they can last a really long time. But if you want a full size, you can't beat the F-150 Fords. They've been making them for ages. You can get V8, you can get a turbocharged V6 that puts out 300 something horsepower and now you can even get diesel engines in them. Recently they started putting diesel engines in them. So you can get a lot of choice with the Ford F-150 if you want a full-size truck that's pulling around a lot of stuff, especially if you're towing things. Martin Sue says, Scotty, I'm unsure about buying my neighbor's 94 Honda Accord with 175,000 miles. That has battery drain, two windows don't work, the radio doesn't work, and the brake lights aren't working. Should I still take it for 700 bucks? It starts up and it runs and it shifts fine, go right ahead. Those things can run for Ever. I got customers with those with 350,000 miles on and that's got what 175 it's got half of that 700 bucks is nothing for car that other stuff you can fix uh, the windows who cares you can live without them as long as it's got a heater and an air conditioner and battery drain yeah you can try to trace it down I've got videos to show how to fix battery drain in your car or you can just disconnect the battery when you shut it off overnight I've had customers do that for years. The shine boy says, I went to Jiffy Lube. They wanted to run oil flush before they changed the oil. Are they trying to scam me? Yes. You should never flush the oil in your car. It can actually damage an engine. The only time you'd want to flush it is, let's say you bought an old junker car from somebody and it's all full of sludge. Then you can put the flush in, run it 15 minutes or so like the directions on the can say, then change the oil and filter. Normally, the oil is all detergent these days. Change it regularly. You never need to flush it. They're just trying to sell you stuff. And I've seen it actually damage things in the long run by putting harsh chemical flushes in that can make seals and stuff start leaking. Hans Krupp says, my 2008 Grand Prix started slipping out a second. I added some X75 or something like that, slip stop, dropped the pan, new filter, ran too much, not revs to five grand out of first. Should I rebuild or get a remanufactured tranny? Okay, if you want to keep the vehicle, you're better off getting a factory reman transmission. They come with a guarantee. Usually you can get a couple of years. They're better made and they can last. Something like 33% of the transmissions that are rebuilt at transmission shops in the United States, 33% of them are done wrong and have to be done over once, twice or three times. So if you want to get it done right, have a factory remanufactured one put in. Me with the 2008 Grand Prix, it's 11 years old. I just get rid of it. I just sell it for whatever I could rather than put money into it because those things generally turn into endless money pits when they're 11 year old. Those are the cars that, you know, Pontiac pretty much went out of business after building those. They were so poorly made, people just stopped buying them entirely. They stopped making them. Matthew Dropko says, what's a good product to keep the trunk compartment dry? I'm getting condensation. I'll check the gas could still yeah first thing you want to do is open it up and then get some good silicone spray all hardware stores auto parts stores sell silicone spray in a can any brand it doesn't matter spray the heck out of all the rubber seals then clean them with a nice microfiber towel and do it again because a lot of times they have dirt and little pieces and that lets water get in so do that first and then on the other side the trunk itself the metal part clean that really good with windex and stuff so all the dirt and crud is off of it past that 
There are many products you can buy. Any desiccant. Most hardware stores sell bags of the stuff in a little plastic container. You can buy a desiccant and you can just stick it in there and that will keep it dry and every once in a while just replace the desiccant bag. I used to do that all the time in the closets in the house but my house is so old I gave up and now I just have giant dehumidifiers that run all the time <laughs> and it keeps the house nice I gotta say. It's human used to. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.